Okay, looking at our second example, our second part of this section rather, we're going to factor, <clears throat> and we're going to factor over Q, over the rational. If you're following in the textbook, you should be. On page 12, it talks about the factor theorem. If you look at, at point number 10, and the second part of the factor theorem says that AX plus B is a factor of a polynomial. Here's a polynomial. If, and if, if it is a factor, then A is going to be a factor of the leading coefficient, and B is going to be a factor of the constant. So let's look at our leading coefficient, 2. So the factors of 2 over the rational numbers are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Factors of 20 over the rational numbers are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, not 3, 4, 5, not 6, 7, plus or minus 10, and plus or minus 20. So using those combinations of positive 1 and 2 for in our A, and our B values are going to be the numbers here, those are our possible factors. So we always like to start simple. So let's first of all check if x minus 1 is a factor. Okay, so our a value is 1, our b value is going to be negative 1. So let's see uh, if this is a factor. And the factor theorem says that we can put in 1, the number is the opposite of what we see, and if we put it into the polynomial and we get 0, it is indeed a factor. So let's see if this is a factor. 2 times 1 to the 4th minus 1 cubed minus 15 times 1 plus 8 times 1 plus 20. We're going to calculate that out. And then when I calculated this, I got positive 14. So that means this is not a factor. Not a factor. Okay? I'm going to erase this, so you might want to pause and make sure you have this written down. Okay, next I'm going to try our next simplest one, x plus 1. So this will be a factor if I sub in the 0 of negative 1 and I get the polynomial to the 0. So let's spend some time doing that. I go through my calculator carefully but because it's a negative, when I cube it, that becomes negative, becomes negative is positive, and indeed I get zero. So this is a factor. So x minus one, or x plus one is a factor. Now, to find out what's left, I use something called synthetic division. And yes, we said we did that in pre-cal 20, or, or 30 rather. We're going to see how we remember this. So, synthetic division looks like this. We take our polynomial, we put only the coefficients. 2 minus 1 minus 15, 8, and 20. We look at our factor, and we put our 0. We put minus 1. Okay? We carry down this 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Here is a common mistake. We do not subtract like we do in division, regular division. In synthetic division, we add these together. Negative 3 times negative 1 becomes positive 3. Adding together, we get negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 1 is positive 12. Adding those together, we get 20. 20 times negative 1 becomes 20. Negative 20. 
we add that together and we get zero. So we know we have done this correctly. Okay? So now our factor is we have x plus 1. And then if we look at this, this is our constant. This would be our x term. This would be our x squared. And this would be our x cubed. So I have 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 20. So I have factors there. Now that I've factored there, I'm going to continue factoring. I'm going to see if this cube is factorable. So I'm going to use that same process with synthetic division, with the factor theorem, to see if I can find another factor. And so again, we're going to look at the candidates. We are meeting coefficient is 2. Our constant is 20, so we have similar candidates. I went through and did this and found one. You are going to have to trial and error to find these. I happen to know that um, x minus 2 is a factor. So we could put p of 2 in when I do that. 2 times 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 20. I'll get you to pause and to calculate this out. Okay, when we pause, we saw that that was indeed zero. So now we are going to use synthetic division again. So we take our zero, we take that two. And then we just put the coefficients of our polynomial here. So two, negative three, negative 12 and 20. We get good at synthetic division when we practice synthetic division. Okay, we bring down the 2. 2 times 2 is 4. We add to get 1. 1 times 2 is 2. We add to get negative 10. Negative 10 times 2 is negative 20. And this is a good check. When we add, we get zero. Okay? So now I know that my factors are x plus 1 from the first step, x minus 2 from the second step, and I'm left with, this is my constant, this is my x, and this is my x squared. 2x squared plus x minus 10. Now this factor is quadratic, so I do have a set of strategies I can use there. I'm going to use decomposition. I need to find two numbers that multiply to be minus 20, negative 10 minus 2, so I got that, and they add to be 1. In this case, I know that those numbers are going to be 5 and to negative 4. Okay? Keep those first two factors. 2x squared plus 5x minus 4x minus 10. Okay, now I'm going to do some grouping. Sorry, I should group like that. And I'm looking what's in the Please don't stay in front. In common between 2x squared and 5x is only x. In common, what's left, sorry, is going to be 2x plus 5. In common between negative 4x and negative 10 is going to be negative 2, and I have 2x plus 5. Finally, um, combining this all together, x plus 1 x minus 2, x minus 2, that's where that came from, and 2x plus 5. Okay. Feel free to pause to rewatch certain parts. I'm going to stop the lesson there. I've given you a lot to watch and to write down. You can now do questions 9, 10, 12, and 13.
Your textbook is an excellent resource for the pages that I, I was talking about. Looking back, finding examples, trying this out, working with your peers. Okay, good luck, Grade 12. We have one more day of this next class.